<laughs> Amen. God is good. Amen. Uh, we, hallelujah, we are uh, grateful tonight uh, for the Lord allowing us to see another night and uh, to be together with a Bible study. Amen. We're going to continue talking about stewardship and uh, we're going to magnify or highlight uh, membership care tonight uh, and kind of go over what we talked about um, on Sunday morning during the uh, uh, the school that we did at 10 o'clock. Amen. We want to make sure that everybody got it. So one of the things that I want uh, to make sure, amen, is that we understand. Now, anybody remember what, what a steward is or what a stewardship is? Anybody remember? I'm going to do a brief recap to make sure you got it. Amen. Nobody took notes. Right. Yes. Good. Somebody that takes care of something, give it to them. Anybody else? Josh wasn't here. Say it again. Right, yeah. Helps. Right. So, someone giving uh, <laughs> All right. And it's a D, not a T. All right, Stuart. Ship. And then we have, uh, what, what did you say again, Josh? <laughs> All right. Taking care of a responsibility or task. All right. Uh, and in a nutshell, help, right? Y'all see that? All right. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Anybody remember the body parts? The body parts of the church. Anybody remember? All right. Let me get you right. Hold on. Well, Monte done pulled his notepad out of here. <laughs> you, ready? you ready now? <laughs> All right. The apostle, prophet, teacher, gifts of healing, miracles. Look at the ATMs going in. I hear y'all. Helps. All right. Government. Y'all doing good. Y'all make me proud. Y'all reading it or y'all something? Y'all remember? Okay. That's all right. All right. And what was the last one? Diversity of tongues, right? All right. This is considered the body parts of the ministry. Body parts of the ministry. All right? Anybody got that? All right. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And verse number 27. All right? Now ye are the body of Christ. Ye are the body of Christ. Now, one thing we want to remember is that because we are the a part of the body of Christ, we got to make sure that we're functioning. That's the reason why I'm teaching the stewardship so we can know how to function and find our place in the ministry. Find your place where you, you know, they used to say, get in where you fit in, right? So find out your specific place in the ministry and get there and do what it takes to be in that position. Y'all follow me? So the body has to function, right? In order for the body to function, everything has to be uh, in, in position. So you know, I, I don't think that my body will be able to function with my heart inside of my hand, right? I don't think my body will be able to function with my brain on my foot, right? So every, what, what does that mean? Everything has to be in a specific position, specific placement. So everything has to be in place. So you being a part of the body of Christ, you got to make sure that you are in where you're supposed to be at. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, I want to go back uh, because we, we talked about church care, and I want to make sure that we got this and we'll make sure we got it really good because uh, church care is uh, uh, one of the parts of stewardship. Church care, and I didn't get to finish uh, all of church care, and I definitely want to deal with membership care today. But church care, I want to go back over to, uh, let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter number 5. Now, one thing we want to make sure... 
is that we're taking care of God's house, right? Y'all with me? Every time we talk about it, let's get quiet. So y'all follow. <laughs> Every time we talk about taking care of God's house, get quiet. Right, so it's, it's a part of everybody's responsibility to make sure that God's house is taken care of. Every part of it, no matter, you know, from the, and, and this is one of the things that we forget. Sometimes we pay a lot of close attention to the inside, but we got to remember that outside of the church is, is a part of the church as well. Outside, because it, you know what I've learned uh, when I was uh, a manager in a restaurant, I used to have to go tour different restaurants. One of the main things we talked about was something called curb appeal. Anybody familiar with that term? Curb appeal? Anybody? All right, so what curb appeal is, is when you pull up everything that you see outside. So it's almost like before I go to the restaurant, I'm eating with my eyes from the outside in. So when you pull up to the restaurant, if you pull up to the restaurant, it's filthy, dirty, you know, weeds everywhere. It don't look like you can get in there. Look, it just, you'd be like, okay, I might take a pass on this one. I want to, you know, I don't want to, amen. Uh, I, I don't want to um, uh, have the, you know, I, I don't want to go there because, you know, this, the way it looks from the outside. So as it is with the sanctuary, we could have, you know, uh, we, we could have everything going on inside of uh, the sanctuary looking good, but we got to make sure that the external is taken care of as well. Y'all follow me? All right, so what I mean by that, what are some things on the outside that need to be taken care of? Grass, very good. All right, so cutting grass, yard work. What else? Parking lot, parking lot. So let me explain something to y'all. I know everybody get their snacks and cookies and all that stuff like that, you know, during services, but it... it it's not right to throw your trash right outside the church. I mean, it's, it's disrespectful. You know, if, if we honor if we honor God's house as it being God's house, you know, we we see different things. You see trash outside, you're not gonna walk past it because this is still God's house. You know, it's just as it is on the inside, and we you know we discuss the inside as well. You know. Uh, 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 being a steward on the inside, making sure that, and, and even something, you know, a lot of things that I, you know, we pay attention to in the restaurant industry as well, is that the glass, you know, like the, 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 uh, the door, windows. So we used to say, you know, you'll look at from about four feet to about two feet is generally the area, or two to four feet is generally the area where fingerprints would be at. Because ain't nobody, you know, anybody really going to be up, you know, opening the door up here. So generally that, that, four, that two to four foot area is that, you know, that place where people touch. So that should be another. But, you know, we, we got to start thinking as far as taking this thing up to the next level because it's God's house. And if we want to, you know, if it's God's house, we need to perfect it and make it look like, you know, it's, it's oh, this is God's house. We got to make sure we take care of God's house. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, let's go where I got you at now. All right, Psalms, Psalms chapter 5 and verse number 7. Hey, man, the microphone going in and out. Praise the Lord. All right, read, uh-huh. But as for me. But as for me. I will come into thy house. I will come into thy house. And the multitude of thy mercy. And the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship toward the holy temple. Uh-huh. Now, Lead. will I worship towards the what? Holy temple. Holy temple. So when we look at the house of God, we want to make sure that we, you know, making sure we emphasize that this is a holy place. And if it's a holy place, we're going to treat it like it's a holy place. And so that got to be our mentality. That got to be our mind to say, man, this is God's house. This is a holy sanctuary. The exterior, you know, uh, so all of the things dealing inside of the house of God out from the door all the way to the restroom to the back door everything should function accordingly amen y'all follow me all right go to the book of Haggai chapter one and I want to go back over this it's a very powerful scripture because if you're not taking care of God's house as you should you know it could it could bless you or it could curse you amen and you know I, I, I remember when, you know, it was a time where, you know, people would be excited to make sure that the house of God look up to par. And let me say this. Let me say this. We don't want to make the house of God look up to par only when guests are coming. 
You follow what I'm saying? Because then, 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 we're, then it's not. It's more like you know how you when you were growing up and people come into your house, everybody run around cleaning up everything, trying to, like, you know, when it's your house, everybody run scrambling, trying to make sure everything look good for people to come in. But what about keeping your house clean at all times, so you don't have to rush and do all stuff like that? So that's how it should be with the God, with God's house. We shouldn't have to wait until you know we have a district meeting, or wait until you know a uh, uh, apostle is coming. You know, or wait until overseers come in and say, oh, hey, let's go ahead and straighten up. You know, let's clean this up. Oh, we got to do this extra, this, do this extra, that. Oh, everything should be maintained. When you maintain something, you know, you don't have to do no extra. Y'all follow what I'm saying? If, you know, for prime example, if uh, if somebody's cleaning or constantly cleaning, say for you clean your car once a week. On that Thursday or Friday, that's your day to clean your car, Right. If you're properly maintaining it every Friday or whatever like that, you don't have to. If you let that thing get it past a month, then you got to do all this extra stuff. So you don't have to do the extra if you're properly maintaining. So we properly maintain the sanctuary. We properly maintain, you know, the upkeep of the sanctuary. We don't have to rush and do anything. Y'all follow what I'm saying? <coughs> Amen. All right. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh-huh, read. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, Came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jezedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste all right so he said is it is it is it time for you to dwell in your houses and you're going to allow the house of god just to go to waste uh-huh read now therefore thus said the lord of hosts consider your ways i want you to consider your ways i want you to pay attention to how uh pay attention to how this is going uh-huh ye have sown much you've sown much and bring in little uh-huh ye eat but ye have not enough Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. So he's saying that this is the curse. This is the curse, amen, that could happen to a person. You can so much and bring in little. What he means is you can go out there in the field and work hard, and when your return, ain't nothing on that return because, you know, your pockets in essence is cursed. Watch this read, huh? Ye clothed you, you, you but get, there is none worn. Uh, you got clothes, but basically what you being clothed with ain't good enough for what you, what you need, huh? And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. And a person that, it, you know, you, you ever heard somebody say you got uh, 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 holes in your pocket? Yeah. This is the scripture talking about. A person that can't keep money. That's just like somebody that got a lot of money but can't show nothing for it. You got a job, you're making $100,000 a year, but it looked like you got a 725 job. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad when you're making six figures. And your and your life look like you're 725. You know why? Because what could happen is that you can get cursed and hold me in your pockets simply because the way you treat God's house. Amen. And that's very powerful. Now the, the powerful thing about it is that a lot of people think that, you know, it's just so casual to do it however they want to do, you know, God's house. But we got to treat God's house right. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We gotta set gotta set this thing right so you can understand it so you, you can find out some of y'all may be having problems with money and you're trying to figure out why you might need to check to see well is, is it because I've been treating God's house funny have I not been you know cleaning up and have I not been helping detail whatever the case may be whatever it is that you see that's going wrong in the house of God you should be like man let me go ahead and fix that you ain't, you ain't gotta get no permission to clean up nothing you ain't got no. You ain't got to get no permission to fix no curtains or nothing like that. Just do it. Amen. Just, hey, 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 pastor, is it all right if I wipe the glass down? Don't ask me to wipe no glass down. Just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Y'all follow what I'm saying? Pastor, can we straighten up the chairs today? Don't, don't, just, just do it. You know, just go ahead and 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 go ahead and do it. What needs to be done? Amen. Y'all follow me? If you see something, you see trash outside, pick it up. You ain't got to wait for, you know, the the the. The yard man, uh, you gotta wait for nobody like that. If you know how to cut grass, you ain't gotta wait for nobody to come cut it. Go get your lawnmower and go cut the grass. Grass high like that, or the grass, you gotta walk. 
you got to march because all the grass is so high. And you see you got a lawnmower at your house. And you wait for, you know, uh, a, a deacon or somebody to come and say, hey, we're going to cut the grass. Instead of you seeing it like that, go ahead and cut it. Amen. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So this is, this is ministry. This is, this is ministry. All right. Now, read, uh-huh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Consider your ways. I want you to consider the way you're treating the house of the Lord. Uh -huh. Go up to the mountain and bring wood. Uh -huh. And build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye look for much, and lo, it come to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. So he said, God said he'll start blowing on people's stuff. Stuff that you don't carry, stuff that you don't work hard for. God will start blowing on your stuff based upon the way you treat his house. And I want to reiterate this because I want you to put this in your spirit. So when you leave out of here today, you'll try to find something to straight, straighten out. Before you walk out of here, you'll try to make sure to see if the, the chair is lined up. And say, let, me, let me try to do something make sure that God's house is taken care of. Y'all follow me? All right, read. Uh-huh. Yes, question. Uh, both. It's considered a minister to God and a man of God. Because that's something, you know, it's the house of God, so it's minister to God, but also the man of God, so that he don't have to be like, oh, I need somebody to do this, I need somebody to do that. So that, that, that goes in both ways. All right? Read, uh-huh. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew. The heaven over you is stayed from dew. Uh-huh. And the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land. So God said that he'll, he'll, he'll dry up. You know when it's supposed, the dew supposed to come? And hit you, it ain't even going to come. It's going to be a drought because of the way people treat God's house. And you'll wonder why a lot of people are in droughts now based upon the way they treat God's house. Don't even know it. Don't even know why they're having issues. Don't know why their stuff dried up because they don't care. And to be honest, people just don't care. Yeah. Amen. And it's good to teach this so that you can get a caring heart, you know, a heart for ministry. A lot of people don't have a heart for ministry. A lot of people just think, let me just let you know this today. And for the rest of your life, you are not just to come to the house of God just to sit there and look cute or just to come and hold a seat. Your job, it's, listen, there's ministry attached to you. That's why you're here. You're not just here just to say, oh, I went to church today. You're not just here because somebody invited you. You're here to be a part. Your hand is not there just to be there. You look at your hand. It, it, just, think, just imagine your hand, your, you got two hands on your body. And, you know, and you just walk around and never use them. Say, well, my hands are just there. <laughs> right? Your hands are there for a specific reason. What God, look at, you look at the whole body makeup. Everything on your body is there for a specific reason. So if, 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 if God, and the reason why God called the body of Christ, because he knows that the body has functionalities and it has different parts. And every part plays a different role. Amen. Amen. All right? Now, you know, like we talked about, what, we, what, we, what did I give y'all an example of last week? We talked about eyebrows, the reason for eyebrows. Y'all remember that? But it also, you know, eyebrows not only are there to protect you from sweat getting in your eyes, but it also helps people to see your expression. Your eyebrows tell a story about how you, you know, how you're feeling, how you're thinking. You know, all those different things, your eyebrows tell that story. Amen. Just think about it. When people frown, eyebrows. <laughs> people are excited. Eyebrows. <laughs> People happy, eyebrows, you know, so different facial expressions, you know, that, that, that's why your eyebrows are there. Amen. All right, so every part of the body uh, serves a specific function, and we got to be function, uh, functioning properly. All right, read, uh-huh. And I call for the drought upon the land. Call for the drought upon the land. And upon the mountains. Uh -huh. And upon the corn. And upon the new wine. And upon the oil. And upon that which the ground bringeth forth. Now watch this, uh-huh. And upon men and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Wait a minute. So God is going to cause a drought dealing with your hands. What in the world does that mean? You know how you've been trying to do all these different things? You know a lot of people back in that day, everybody worked pretty much with their hands. So he said you're going to cause a drought, meaning that he, he, you won't be able to be productive with your hands. So the, you know, if, if a person was an artist, he wouldn't be drawn no more. If they were, you know, gathering whatever with their hands, doing whatever, you know, whatever they did with their hands, God will cause that to drop because they haven't, they didn't use their hands in the house of God. This is a, this is a prophecy. 
And, you know, uh, the Lord showed Hagar this because of the way they were treating God's house. Everybody, nobody was really uh, 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 doing uh, the ne necessary things to keep up God's house because people just looked at it as, you know, as people do today. Just come and just sit and relax, you know, prop up your feet, you know, eat, hang out, chill, laugh, play, all those different things like that. That's how it happened back then. It's happening today. All right, read, huh? Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, and Joshua, the son of Zedekiah, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Uh -huh. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. Now, I want you to see this. Once they got into compliance, he said, I am what? With you. With you. Go back. Go back. Go back to that verse there. Uh -huh. Read. Then spake Hagar, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message uh -huh. unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. So once they got into compliance, and once they did what they were supposed to do according to God's house, God said, I'm with you now. So God, you know, that, 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 that lets me know that if we don't have the mindset or if we're not doing what we're supposed to do as far as taking up, keeping up God's house, it, lets, it, it pulls God away from us. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, go down to the Exodus chapter 24. All right. Exodus 36, I'm sorry. All right, and one, uh-huh. Then wrought Bez Beziel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to, know how to work all men or work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. So there is work for the sanctuary. So we're not just coming here, you know, just to, you know, and, and, and we can't get comfortable just coming on, you know, these service nights and that's it. But there's work to be done in the sanctuary, not just, you know, uh, uh, ministry work as far as, you know, somebody preaching or ministering. But there's other work, you know, physical work that needs to be done in the house of God. Amen. All right, read, huh? And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man, and whose the heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart, heart stirred him, up to come unto the work, work to do it. So God stirred their heart. They had to have a stirring in them. God had to stir them to be able to, you know, have that, that, that mindset to work in the house of the Lord. Uh -huh, read. And they received of Moses all of the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary uh -huh. to make it with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. All right, so the Bible talks about them working in the sanctuary. So there is sanctuary work. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right, now the last one, and we're going to switch over to membership care. Go, to, go back to Acts chapter 3. I would like somebody to look at. Redeeming love when they come up and say, man, this is a beautiful place. They call it beautiful redeeming love. That's how it should be as they did in the Bible. Read 3 and 1. Uh -huh. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. All right. So this, this gate... Oh, the temple was called what? Beautiful. Beautiful. It wasn't just called beautiful just to be called beautiful. Beautiful is a description. So it was called beautiful based upon what it looked like. And so when people come to Redeem and Love Church of God the Bible way, they should be able to say, man, it's beautiful in there. Amen. Amen. Y'all follow me? We don't, we don't nobody say, oh, it's junky there or, you know, can't get around, <laughs> cluttered, all this stuff like that. But they should have the ability to say, hey, it looks good in there. And we should take pride in making sure that the house of God looks good. Amen. Amen. From organization to cleanliness, all those different things, because that's church care. And being a steward, we want to make sure that wherever I, I can help to keep God's house looking good, that's what I'm going to do. 
All right? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, now, we're going to talk about membership care. I want you to go down there to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 3. This is, all, this is a part of stewardship as well. This is helping, and it's membership care. All right. Now, one of the greatest problems in the church today is that people in the congregation don't know how to minister to each other. Amen. It's easy for the people to minister to the pastor. That's easy. It's easy for the pastor. I was easy, but it's good. <laughs> easy for the pastor to minister to the saints, right? So the love relationship between the saints and the pastor is fine. But the problem becomes with the people. They don't, you have a ministry to, to, to each other. Everybody in. You're supposed to be able to have the ability to minister to each other. Deal with one another. Love with one another. This is why you got all these scriptures in the Bible. Talk about bearing one another burdens. Helping one another. Loving on each other. Because you have a ministry to each other. Amen. And I think that, you know, that's one of the, I mean, that's one of the greatest problems. But very problematic because the saints don't know how to minister to each other amen and every, every now and again I, I'll pair up some people in the church hey you I want you to be with this one I want you to help out with this person I want you to deal with this person deal with that one it's so that you guys can learn how to minister to each other like, well, well pastor why you put me with this person pastor why you want me to help this person why? because I want y'all to learn how to minister to each other amen. amen because you have a job you got a job to be able to you know to, to, to minister to one another alright First Thessalonians chapter number uh, three and verse number one, uh huh, uh, three and twelve, uh huh. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. Now he said, now he don't want you just to have a love towards each other, but what does that say? He wants you to increase that love. And this is why it's very, 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 very important for you all to maintain these fellowships. Very important because your responsibility is to increase your love with the person sitting beside you. Amen. Amen. It's your job in the ministry to and not just love, but he said I, I, we got to be able to increase in love. So this, this happens when you know, people are fellowshipping with one another, dealing with each other, doing things with each other. You know, that we had, you know, I, I, I was so uh, uh, excited and happy when we went down there to Florida and fellowship with one another. That was a, that was a great day. Amen. Wonderful day. I can't wait for the next one. Tori, when the next one is? Huh? Fifth month. We got it. Well, that's in two months. Good. I'm ready. I'm excited. I, I, I really enjoyed myself. Did y'all enjoy yourself when we went? So that fellowship in is very important because what happens is now I know how to connect. I know how to communicate better with this person. I know how, and this is why it's good to, and what we might do the next time, and I may, may just pair people up to spend, that'll be your, your, your buddy for the trip. Have a good, you know, have a buddy for the trip. So that, you know, y'all, y'all responsible for each other, meaning that you responsible for making sure that person's getting the bus. Y'all, when we go out to eat, y'all sit beside each other. When we on the bus, y'all sit near each other. Y'all talk to, amen. amen. Let me tell you something. The Bible talks about when, when Jesus, he sent folks out by two. Yeah. Why? To build relationship. The apostles, they went out by two. You know, Paul and, and Barnabas, they went out. You know, also. So that, that the reason for that was for relationship building. Amen. So I'm not I'm not gonna pair Frankie and Mike up together because they be together all the time. They know each other like that. So we gotta be able to, you know, match people up that, that haven't been, you don't know this person, know that much about each other. So you can be able to increase in love. How do I increase in love with somebody? Say that again, Tiffany. Spending time. That's how I increase love. And so this is a part of membership care. This is a part of, can I tell you something? This is a part of loving the body of Christ. This is a part of loving God. Because if you're in the body of Christ, she's in the body of Christ, and y'all love on each other, and like, then that means that you're loving on God. But if you, if you don't talk to her, 
If you're mean and nasty to her, guess what? You're being mean and nasty to God because we are the body of Christ. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. So if I'm not, if I'm not, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do with my brother and my sister, you know, I'm really, I'm really going against not only the scripture, but I'm going against the body. Going against the body. One thing, you know, one thing I've noticed is, uh, uh, you know, when you have, uh, 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 when you get your hair cut, it's a thing. Now, some of y'all brothers, some of y'all got some waves. Some of y'all struggling a little bit. I see that Draylon had a do-rag on the other day. I was praying for him. I said, Draylon, you trying to get some waves? He said, yes, sir, I'm trying to get it. I said, I see the few up there coming in there. But listen. When you, when, you're, when you get a haircut, and, and anybody know anything about waves, it's something called going against the grind. And what happens is if I cut against it, I could cut out what's in there. And so it's supposed to go, go with it. And, and if we're not going with the flow of Christ, we're going against. So we're fighting. To, we're, we're, listen, so we're fighting against God. When we're not coming together, spending time with each other, we're not fellowshipping like we should, not loving on each other like we should, we're going against the grind. We're going against Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when you do that, and, and, and I think that's right from the, that, that's right, right? When, in the, in the uh, cosmetology community, huh? Oh, grain. I said the wrong thing. I said grind. Grain, grind. What is it? Grain. Okay, I said grind. I'm sorry. Grain, grind. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though, huh? Okay, all right. I'm not a cosmetology expert, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So going against the grain. So what happens is, you know, you can cut that out. And what, that, what happens is you start cutting people out of the church when you're going against it. So now this person is hurt by this, that person hurt by that. So then people start exiting, and, you know, because everybody ain't strong. Everybody ain't strong. Everybody can't handle what you can handle. So what happens is when you're not fellowshipping like you should, building like you should, it cuts people out. So it's very important to increase in love. Somebody shout, increase in love. Increase in love. Come on, one more time. Increase in love. Increase in love. So that's something that we need to practice. Something that we need to practice. Go talk to somebody new. Try to increase in love with this person. Try to increase in love with that person. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right, now, go down there to the book of, oh, keep reading, uh-huh. Increase and in, in abound in love one toward another, uh-huh. And toward all men. And toward all men. Even as we do toward you. Even as we, so because we treat you like this. So this is, this is you know, from a, 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 a man of God, a, a pastoral. He said, I show y'all love, so y'all need to make sure y'all showing love towards each other. So in essence, what Paul's saying, there's no, there's no issue when it comes down to love between you and I. But the problem is, is the people. The people have a problem with loving on each other. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right, now, go down there to the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 22, huh? Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Uh -huh. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. I want you to love one another with a what? Pure heart. How do I get to love somebody with a pure heart? How could I get to that place where I'm not just loving you, you know, just because pastors say love you? And some of y'all be lying, going to people at the church talking about, you know, I love you, ain't nothing you can do about just lying. Ain't got no pure heart. Don't got no pure love, you know, when it comes down to, you know, loving somebody. So the Bible talks about we need to get to a place where we have unfeigned love of the brethren and, and that is Pure, pure, pure. How do we get to that pure place? Place, same thing. How do I get to that place where I increase in love? Spending time. So how could I get to the place of pure love? Spending time. Amen. Y'all follow me? This, 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 is, this is called membership care. This is how we're supposed to show this stewardship towards each other. Amen. All right. Now go down there to the book of First John. Chapter 3. All right. And verse number 11. Uh huh. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Uh huh. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. So now, we got a comparison of loving somebody 
and it'll go straight to Cain. So if I'm not loving, what's the opposite of love? Hate. Hate. So if I'm not loving, you know, then, then what, I, I, I'm not in between, so I, what is my feeling towards this person? That thing goes straight to Cain. He said, don't, don't be like Cain killing his brother. You know you can kill your brother in the church. You know how? Anybody know about talk, talk, huh? Hating. When you hate, the Bible talks, the Bible calls you a murderer when you hate your brother. Bible call you a murderer. Let me give you that. When you don't love your brother and you hate him, everybody that's a murderer ain't the one with a gun in their hand. It's the one with the poison in their mouth. Some people got poison in their mouth killing folks. Three and fifteen? I'm John first. First John 3.15. Thank you, son. All right. Whosoever hated his brother. Whosoever hated his brother. This is the same uh, context of scripture. Uh-huh. Is a murderer. If you hate your brother, use a what? A murderer. Murderer. You got a lot of folks murdering folks because they hate them. Don't have a love for them. Not showing love towards them. Because of something that happened a year ago, two weeks ago, four years ago, five, five, five months ago. Just... Yeah. Just hate, just hating somebody. And so what happens is when you hate somebody, you got you, you got you, you, your mouth bitter, poison all on your tongue, you just start talking about that person. Sowing seeds of discord about that person. I got somebody say, I don't want to be no murderer. Because you know murderers ain't over there, um, Bible said that the murderers got a little got their little got a little place too. Amen. Y'all with me? Look at somebody and say, I don't want to be no murderer. Go down there, right over there, lies back down the street by liars. Go down there, Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and 8, uh-huh. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So now we see that people that, you'll be right down the road with the liars, when you're, when you're a murderer. Amen. Ain't no murderers going to heaven now, I'm just let you know that now. I know folks tell you that, you know, everybody get their chance to go to heaven and after, you know, all that stuff like that. You got your chance now. Just don't be out here murdering folks. First John 4, 7, uh-huh. Beloved, let us love one another. Let us love one another. For love is of God. For love is who? Of God. Of God. So love is of God. Then we got another scripture that says God is love. So you got love is of God, God is love. So if you're not loving, then we got to try to figure out, amen, the, uh, our position. We got to figure out our position as far as if we're of God or not, if we don't have love. Y'all follow me? Yes, question. Um, yes, sir. So how do you become a softer person, if that makes sense? You know how some people can be like very hard and... Um, like in certain situations, you know, you might not be very emotional or you might, it might be hard for you know, to like receive love or like show love or something like, I don't know. But, you know, how do you become softer, I guess, when it comes to love? Well, love will soften you up. Go down into Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to show you. All right. Ephesians 4, 32, huh? And be ye kind one to another. Be kind one to another. Tenderhearted. So when you start being kind, it starts to soften your heart. So I'm starting to be kind to people. It, it, it's out of my comfort zone, but the more I do it, it, it just softens my heart. It, it, it causes my heart to be tender. And some of y'all got some hard hearts. And they got to sit in some. You got to get, you, you know, you got to spend some time with the Lord. Bible call them a consuming fire. I, I, I ain't never seen nothing tough sit in some boiling water and remain tough. 
It softens it up. So you still you get to get in the presence of God a little longer, it, it'll soften you up, soften your heart. Have you stop being so hard and so, you know, uh, uh, you know, some some people are hard because of things that didn't happen to them. Because a lot of things that didn't happen to them in their past, they get this hard, this hardness. And they don't, you know, they don't want nobody to talk to them. Don't want nobody to give them a hug. They turn away from everything. You don't want to be, you know, and, 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 and for ministry's sake, because once you get that, you know, and we start being tenderhearted, forgiving one another. People that have hard hearts is because they haven't forgave. Because that unforgiveness, it causes the heart to be tough. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That, 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 that bitterness... And that anguish, animosity, all of that stuff, it causes such a toughness in your heart. And if, you want, if you're going to be saved, you've got to be tender hard. got to be tender hard. And it comes from being around other people that are like that. You know, there, 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 were, there were people that have come and they were tough, mean, and hanging around a bunch of people that show love, it'll soften you right on up. Some of y'all came in here rough and tough. Came in looking all hard. And after a while, people don't start hugging your neighbor every Sunday. And, and they just, <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> so that toughness, it just started, you know, start going on now. Start going on now. Because you was tough in the beginning, but that love. So you get in the environment of love, and what that does is it, it softens the heart. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. 4 and 17. Uh, 4 and 11. I'm sorry. 4 and 11 of uh, 1 John. All right. John 4 and 11. All right. Beloved, if God. Uh -huh. Beloved, if God so love us, uh -huh. we ought also to love one another. Uh huh. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Ah, uh, so now it's something called having love, but that love isn't perfect yet. Now see that? So no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwell in us, and his love is perfected in us. So what happens is, the more I love on people and God dwell in me, so now what happens is that love inside of me gets perfect. That love inside of me gets perfected. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And we need, we need to have a perfected love so our hearts can be tender, so we won't be so hard and so rough and so mean. Y'all follow me? All right, read, uh-huh. Hereby know we that we know that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. All right, Second John chapter five. I mean, First John chapter five. I'm sorry. And verse number one, huh? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. Uh -huh. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. All right, so when we love God, then we should be loving each other. And if we don't love each other, then the question is, do we really love God? So this deals with member care, membership care, all right? Now, I want you to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we need to get a group in the church that's called All right, we need to have a group called the Care Group. And what this does is it's a group of individuals that really care and show concern. I'm going to be honest with you. Some people don't need anything. They just want you to show them some attention. They just want you to show them that you care about them. 
And this is why it's very important when you don't see somebody in church that you reach out to them. Amen. And sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, people be so caught up in their own stuff on their own self, whatever like that, that they don't even, they don't have, you know, they got tunnel vision, so they can't really see, you know, oh, man, sister such and such ain't come to church today. Let me call her and make sure she's all right. Let me shoot her a text message and say, hey, sis, we miss you today. We love you. Sometimes some people just want, just some people just want that. You got some people that just have, you know, and, and, and to be honest, some people intentionally don't go to church just to see if somebody going to see if they're going to care, care about them or not. Which, you know, is, I mean, it, it, it's, it's quite ridiculous, but some people do that. And what they do is they intentionally miss a service to see if somebody's going to reach out to them. Because they need that attention. They need that, do, well, is it, if I leave, would anybody care? If I, you know, if I disappear or if I walk out, would anybody follow me? Y'all follow what I'm saying? It, some, some people mind, I'm coming to you. Some people mind is like that. Amen. Bible called, Bible called feeble-minded. Feeble-minded. And some people just need that. They have that, you know, they need that special attention. And so we need to get a group of people, and I want to get with y'all today, and let's get some folks that don't mind being on a care group. And what the care group would be, they just get that attention to people that they need. Not, not saying that, you, you know, you know, oh, you know, whatever, but, you know, make sure that you call. Hey, sis, how you doing? We love you. We haven't seen you today. We just call and check up on you. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So we, we can have a, 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 a care group that gives that special care. If somebody in the hospital, y'all going to check on them, making sure that they're doing well. Somebody, you know, sick, and we're going get to get to that because there's always supposed to be a team of people that, have, that do visitations to sick and all that stuff like that. Of course, the pastor will be there and go there, but there should be people, people in the church that do that as well. The Bible talks about it, but we're going to get there. All right. So, yes, got a question. from Florida, she recently reached out to me and um, her church is actually starting up with a care package um, ministry. So it's just so crazy that you're talking about that right now and then I'm also helping out with them and that stuff. So good. it seems like, you know, we're on accord with yeah. all that. So that's crazy. That's good. Yeah, we definitely need that care group. That, that's, that's a part of ministry. We need to show that membership care. And that just shows that you care about somebody sitting beside you. Amen. You know, if you got to, you know, uh, if that pollen get in your nose like it get to mine, you Somebody else on your row, and you got some Kleenex at the house, and you bring a little little pack of Kleenex. Say, sis, I heard you sneezing a couple of times yesterday. Here you go. You know how that sometimes that make people feel good because that shows that you care. Show that you care. I was in when I was in high school, man. People used to be trying to be funny, but they used to have book. I, I have a book bag full of uh, toilet paper, man. People just bring it. Like, here you go, Eli. We know you're gonna be sneezing today. Here you go. <laughs> I'm the only kid in the, in the hallway blowing my nose the whole time. Allergy season. Amen. And I noticed, I, get, I, I noticed one of my parents, you know, I found out that one of them got it bad. Amen. <laughs> I used to, I, I noticed that, man, I, I, I had little tissues everywhere. Tissues in my pockets, tissues in my jacket pockets. And I, I noticed that my mom, she had a little tissue in her purse. And I said, man, we, I guess I see where I get it from. <laughs> But they, 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 they used to get, they would have a, you know, a roll of toilet paper and say, here, here you go. You know, we knew you were going to be out here sneezing. Today. So, so that's something to show that you care about somebody. It's not always the big old, you know, got to do this extravagant thing, but it can be something as simple as a little small little pack. How much is that thing called? About 25, 35 cents? Three for a dollar. That's, you know, something as small as that to give to somebody. That's it. I'm not talking about giving to me because I got... Plenty, plenty of, uh, <laughs> says no, my nose be run. But when uh, 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 somebody sitting beside you, you notice that something, hey, here you go. God bless you. Hey, I, I know that I see you eat Laffy Taffy's a lot, and I was at the store, and I just wanted to, you know, be a blessing to you. Here you go. You follow what I'm saying? That's just, y'all, come on, y'all, y'all know what I'm saying. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Sister Linda, you can have, it's all right. You can take a few of them. Yeah, that's all. You, that's all right. All right. 
I made you get that. It got a little, when you cried about that Bible, it got you good, got you, hit you out hard, huh? <laughs> All right. Now, let's go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 25. All right. That there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Wait a minute. So there should be a care that you have as a member. I care about you. I care about you. So because I care about you, I'm going to show you that I care. Care is one of those things just like love. You know, when you say you love somebody, you don't just say it, but you show it. So if I say I care about you, I'm going to show you that I care. So the Bible says, uh, first of all, it eliminates schisms. No schisms, many issues, you know, problems, all, to get, all that stuff like that. No schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care. The same care. So we need to make sure that we're caring for each other. Amen. Y'all follow me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. You want to love everybody. But there's a special, you know, there's a special care and a special love that you need to do inside the house of God. Because this is God's body. All right? Now, go down to Romans chapter, uh, I'm sorry, re read the next verse. And whether one member suffer. If one member suffer. All the members suffer with it. Well, wait a minute. What does that mean? If one member is suffering, everybody should suffer? Let me tell you what that means because everybody don't know what that means. That means that if Matt has a problem or if he's in pain or he's hurt in a certain way of his emotions, I should be able to feel what he feels because we're connected. So if you're suffering, if you're going through something, because we're so, that's just like, if something happens to me, if I, if I come in here crying, I know some of y'all, in y'all eyes, y'all couldn't watch me cry. Because you'll, be, you'll, you'll feel it. I can't, I can't watch my mother cry. Because I'll be able to feel, because when you have that, when you have that love and that, you know, that, that compassion and care for a certain person, you can feel what they feel. So if a person is going through something, and it shows that if you really love somebody, and it shows that if you really care about somebody, if you're going through something, I can feel what you're going through. I can be able to, I should be able to feel. That's why it says, that's why it said, whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Uh, with it, uh-huh. Oh, oh. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. So if a member gets blessed with something, you know what? If, if Patrice gets blessed with a car, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and start dancing and praising God for her because that's something that she got. That, that's how we should be with each other. If somebody gets something, we shouldn't be upset when somebody say, oh, I just bought me a new house. Everybody in, everybody in the church should be running around praising God just like it was for them. Because I'm supposed, to, I'm, I'm supposed to have the ability to feel what he's feeling. So every time, just like this, okay, problem is out. We got a basketball team, all right? Let me get five brothers real quick. Five, y'all. All right, five. Trina, sit down, daughter. <laughs> All right, y'all come over here. All right. This is, this is the basketball team, right? Let's see, who the best shooter out of y'all? Uh, Matt or Mike? You, start, you done got better? You done got a little better? Come here, Davon. Uh, <laughs> they said it's the only thing he can do. It's all right. All right, so we got Coach Mike. Coach Mike is here, and this is his team, right? Now, Davon, y'all y'all act like y'all, you know, play basketball. Now, it's got five seconds left, right? Five seconds left. You're going to take the jump shot. You're going to make it, okay? All right, he made it. Boom. Y'all just won a championship. All right. All right, now, <laughs> all right, now, all right, who scored? All right, come here, Davon. Davon scored, right? He should, it, now, should he be the only person rejoicing? Why? Because it's a team. So the coach didn't even score either. But guess what? The coach did score. 
Davon scored, but Vontae scored. Davon scored, but LaRon, Josh, and Matt, all of them scored because he scored. So if we're, we're the church, we're the body of Christ. So if one person get a win, we all just won. Y'all follow me, y'all be seated. So, so when you have somebody that gets something or somebody gets a victory, if somebody has, you know, a victory in their life and they're excited about it, you should be excited right along with them. You should be looking around with why? Why she keep getting blessed? Now, that's her fourth testimony this week. Why she? Why? Why I ain't get mine yet? That's how people think. But well, Lord, when my next time? When, when is it gonna be me? When is it gonna be me? Instead of rejoicing with that person. So go down there to Romans chapter twelve. All right. Romans 12 and 15, huh? Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Rejoice with them that rejoice. And weep with them that weep. And weep with them that weep. So because we're a unit, if you're weeping, I can feel your weep. If you're rejoicing, I can feel your rejoice. Because we are a unit. We are a body. Amen. If, if I get cut on my leg, my whole body feel it. The whole, your whole body going to respond. Better yet, if you hit your foot, your hand going your, your to automatically try to grab it. If you hit your shoulder on something, the hand going, oh, oh, help me. You know, uh, uh, be, your, your hand going to be grabbed. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So another part of your body is going to respond when a part of your body hurts. Amen. And so you get a victory. Everybody should rejoice. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Now, go down there to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. All right, six and two. You know, too often we fail to bear each other's burdens or carrying each other's feelings. We fail to do that because we're not close enough. We fail to do that because, you know, the question would be, are we really a body if you can't feel what I feel? Are we really, are we the same body? If you can't feel what I'm feeling, are we the same body? All right, read, huh? Bear ye one another's burdens. Bear ye one another's burdens. How in the world can I bear somebody else's burdens? Because if we're close enough, I can feel it. I can hold you up. I can hold what you got. Your burdens I can put on my back and carry it with me. Because we're close enough. Amen. All right, now. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Another one of the things we want to make sure... And we have or understand is serving each other. People be quick. If Pastor needs some water, people come running. Pastor, you go, here's your glass of water, Pastor. Is there somebody cooking? Hold on, mate. We gotta get Pastor a plate. Here you go, Pastor. Here's some food. Here's some food. Oh, we got we got some of this. Oh, Pastor, here you go. You don't have a problem with serving a pastor, but you don't have, or you have a problem with serving people beside you. As a problem, when you can't serve each other. This is membership care. Membership care deals with, and this is stewardship. This all deals with each other. You got to be able to serve each other. Amen. Not just only serving a pastor or, or serving, you know, uh, uh, people that you're close to or good with. Amen. Be able to serve everybody. Serve each other. All right? Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Oh, Lord. By what? Love. Love serve, serve one another. So then, if I'm not serving you, then the question is, do I love you? Because we, we're serving by love. And because love is an action, I could serve you because I love you. Amen. Yeah. So now, we, we, you know, it's, it's, it's getting pretty interesting now because we got to be able to serve each other by love. And now, don't do it with an attitude, slapping people mashed potatoes on their plate and, you know, stuff like that. We want to make sure that if we're going to serve, we're serving with love. Hey, what else can I get for you today? If y'all are serving food, 
We, we, we're here having service and you're serving food. You should be just as kind and nice to everybody in that line. Even if you feel like this person don't like you, that person don't like you, hey, what else can I get for you? Is there anything else? And serve with a smile. Don't be all mean and nasty looking and looking like you got a problem, all that stuff like that, but serve with a smile. Serving in love. And I think that, you know, the, the, the problem is people just don't like to serve other people. Overseer Williams coming to the town. Oh, oh can we, 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 oh, get it. We need to be able to serve the men of God. Serve the men of God. Apostle coming. Oh, we got to serve the men of God. Bishop's coming. Serve the men of God. The district elder coming. Serve the men of God. The pastor's coming. Serve the men of God. But when the people right beside you coming to get served, you're looking cross eyed like you don't want to help. <laughs> that's bad when you can serve. That's bad when you could only serve the pastors and the apostle and the bishops, but you can't serve the people beside you. That's bad. That's bad. That's real bad when you could only serve your, your, uh, uh, your leadership and you can't serve people beside you. Because clearly the Bible let us know that we got to be able to serve one another. That, that's dealing with the congregation. Galatians was a church. That, that was a church in, 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 uh, in Galatia. So in that church, he was writing this letter telling them that you guys got to be able to serve each other. He wasn't talking to a pastor. He was talking to the church that y'all got to have the ability to serve each other in love, by love. Amen. All right. Read that one more time. As a matter of fact, let's read together on the count of three. One, two, three. By love, serve one another. This might need to be a scripture that we start reading during services. Amen. Just to get a reminder that we need to start serving each other. It might be to be your scripture that you have on your dash in your car, wherever you, you know how y'all have little sticky notes, put it on your steering wheel. Put it somewhere so you can remember. I need to serve. I need to serve. I need to love. I need to love. I need to serve. These are scriptures you need to be studying. See, as the church, and we understand how the Bible is broken up and broken down, but the letters that Paul wrote from Rome and all that, all those different letters, that's for, that's for the church. This is how we're supposed to operate. And this is how we're supposed to function. So if you want to get, if you want to learn some stuff, you need to learn how you need to act in church. You need to learn how you're supposed to act towards each other. Learn how to treat one another. Amen. See, we don't have a problem when it comes down to, you know, treating the leadership and making sure because you, in your mind, if I, if I do the wrong thing to leadership, God going to get me. If you do the wrong thing to your brother or sister, God will get you too. Amen. All right? Now, Ephesians chapter 4. But let, 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 let's do this because I want to break the word serve down because I want to make sure everybody got it. Maybe you take notes so you can make sure you have it. All right? Serve is a verb. I wasn't trying to rhyme, y'all. Just, you know, it just happened that way. <laughs> <laughs> serve is a verb. <laughs> All right? Now, to act as a servant. Oh, Lord. Now, when people see or the word servant comes to mind, let me ask somebody. All right? Imani, when you hear the word servant come to mind, what do you think about? First thing come to mind, what's that? I don't know. Sharonda? Linda? Say it again. A leader? Serving a leader? Good. All right. Sharonda? Say it again. Assisting others? All right. Uh, Shauna? Serving someone? All right. Laron? A butler? Okay. Journey? When you hear the word servant, a uh, usher, uh, okay, all right, nurse, okay, Dante, a waiter, okay, all right, anybody else want to give me one? Yes, a ferret, that's an animal, 
Might be a good, okay, that might be, they might serve a little bit. All right. Frank? Someone that gives, Matt? Somebody that love, okay, anybody else? Tia? Somebody that gives, okay. Joel? Humble? All right. Draylon? Attending somebody that needs, good. Germany? Huh? Say it again. Say that louder. Some type of slave. That's why people don't do it. That's what that's that's what I was looking for. Everybody was trying to be spiritual and oh, to love one another and to give, to be a helper. But when people honestly hear the word servant in their mind, they're thinking about a slave. Very good. Very right, give Germany a hand. This is, why, this is why people don't serve. Because they know that serve is connected to servant. And when you hear servant, in your mind, you think you're somebody's slave. And that's why people don't serve. Because of the mentality. Because they don't understand that it's beyond. It's not, you know, a slave. Amen. Amen. But it's about all the other things that you all were saying about giving and about serving, all those things. Those are the, the real things. But when people hear the word servant, first they come to mind a slave. Amen. All right, now, the next one, to be in the service of or work for. These are definitions. To be in the service of or work for. All right. All right, last one. To be useful or of service to help. All right. This is how you define serve. All right? Now, one of the things we must understand is that God want to use us. And most people, when they hear the word, they ain't that much just want to use me. You're right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, well, I just I just want to use me. You're right. Because when it comes down to the kingdom, we're supposed to be used. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Go down there to 1 Timothy chapter 3. I want that scripture about being used. Second Timothy two and what? Two and what? What does that say? That's it. That's the one right there. If a man therefore purge himself. All right. Second Timothy. What I said. Did you say two? All right. Second Timothy two and twenty. Uh huh. If a man. Twenty one. Therefore twenty. One. Uh huh. If a man therefore, if a man therefore purge himself, purge himself from these, uh huh, he shall be a vessel. He unto shall honor, be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, sanctified, and me, and me for the master's use. For the master's what? Use. Use. So when it comes down to ministry, you're supposed to be used. People be getting mad talking about it. They always just trying to use me. That's right. You absolutely right. We want to use you. Don't you use your hands? Your hands ain't complaining about picking up everything. 
Imagine your hands, <laughs> your hands tell you, hey, I'm tired of picking up everything. Use somebody else. Use your use the elbow or something. Use shoulder or something. I'm tired of picking up stuff. What you think your hands there for? To be what? Used. Why are your feet there? To be used. Your eyes don't get upset with you when you're watching everything and looking at everything and say, well, I, why you always got to use me to see? Amen. Somebody I hear it all the time. People say, well, they didn't, ain't doing nothing but just want to use you down at the church. All they want to do is use you. Well, what you think you coming for? <laughs> they want me to sing every Sunday. I got to, oh boy. I gotta play the keyboard again. Well, you should know how to play then. <laughs> I gotta play the drums again this Sunday. Oh, you should know. You, you, if you don't want, listen. God gave you gifts and talents and abilities so you could be used. That's just like a a, a, a shooting guard on the team saying, well, "Why y'all always want me to take the shot?" That's your position on the team. Y'all ain't saying that. All right, read, uh-huh. And prepare. Unto every good work. Unto every good work. So you're supposed to be used for what? Work. And it's good work, too. You're going to get your good work out. Uh-huh. Amen. So we, we can't look at everything saying, oh, they're just, they're just being used. I got to be, oh, they about to use me again. I got to be you. Yeah, that's what ministry is about. It's about using people. You better be glad that God chose you to be used. And used in the truth and used the right way. You don't want to be the ones that he used, amen, down there in Matthew chapter 7. The ones that using his name and he just using them and they, they done got fired and still working. All right, let me help get y'all out of here. I'm losing you. This is some good stuff now. All right, Ephesians chapter 4. We talk about serving one another. Let's talk about forbearing one another. All right. Ephesians. Chapter 4, all right, who know how to write real good and well, fast? What are y'all brothers? Hello, Ron? Huh? Come on, Ron. It's a lot of stuff, I don't want to write, write all this. All right. All right, right, forbearing, and I'm going to get a definition. He's going to write it down. All right. Ephesians chapter 4 and 1, what does that say? I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that Uh ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, Uh with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in what? Love. Love. All right, forbearing, first definition is to be patient. Tolerance and easygoing. All right. Y'all can understand that? All right. (laughs) All right. Next one. Lenient. Uh, L E N. Uh All right. Element forgiving, understanding. Commending, accommodating, all right, and indulgent. All right, the next part of that definition is to refrain or abstain from. And desist from, D-E-S-I-S-T. It's a good word. All right. You know that one, Monte? Okay. (laughs) All right. And the last one is to keep back or withhold. All right, these are the definitions of forbearing, all right? 
All right, go back to the scripture. What verse you was on? All right, keep reading. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit uh -huh. in the bond of peace. So when we forbear, for, forbear one another, it helps us to bond that peace together and remain unified. But one of the very important things is to make sure that we have patience with saints that have difficulties. Because some of y'all be running out of patience fast. Uh, shit, we got to pray with her again? Well, what's going on? Well, when we had to pray you out. We ain't acting like that towards you. Amen. So we got, if, we, if we're going to be you know, forbearing, that means that we're going to be in a position where we're being patient and tolerant, meaning that you should be able to have some tolerance and have some, be able to withstand some stuff. If some things happen or some things go on, you're still there and you're dedicated and you're committed to whatever that issue is that that other person is having. Amen. No matter how many times it'll fail, some of y'all done came to my office a bunch of times about different things that you done did, some stuff repeat. I never cha changed on you and never turned my back on you. So y'all shouldn't do that with each other. Amen. You know, I'll tell you something about folks, man. Thank you, son. You know, what, what, what people do... They fail to realize is that you got to be patient with people. Right. People have, so, and some of y'all, y'all probably, y'all in y'all mind, I'm saying, Pastor should have been gave up for me. I keep having this problem. I keep doing this. I keep doing that. Pastor should have been cut me out of the picture. Pastor should have been did this. I'm not going to give up on you. Amen. Because you're still sticking in the ministry. You're still here, so I can't give up on you. You ain't give up on me. Amen. You're still coming. Amen. It would church be, sometimes the church be like a roller coaster. You're still there. Y'all ain't saying that. People go up and down. This, this, is, this is, you know, this is life. You have those times when people are up, and then you got those times when people go down. But you got to be patient enough to stick it out with them. Amen. If you were signed to pray with this specific person and they having problems getting up in the morning, stick it out with them. Keep pushing. Don't complain. That's for Barry. All right? Somebody shout Hallelujah. All right, read, read on the next one, uh huh? There is one body. All right, go to uh, James chapter one. This is the last one, and I'm going to close here. Y'all getting some good stuff tonight? Thank you, Leron, for your penmanship and helping me out. This all deals with stewardship, okay? And we'll I'll finish this out on first day school. All right. Now, um. What I said? James 1. All right, 1 and 27. Now, the, the last one we're going to talk about is visitation. All right? And, you know, for the most part, I, I, I must say this. You all, when I ask you to do stuff, some, for, for the most part, majority of you all, when I call and ask you to go visit somebody and help people, you all do it. And I, and I commend you to it for that. And I appreciate everybody that has ever went out and we you know we lost one of the members of the church we thank god for sister eddie may and you know she was very special to me she was very that lady she she loved me text me every day pastor i just love you and I, if nobody else texts me and told me they appreciate me she'll text me every single day every day the dope they miss a beat every day but when she was ill i sent a few of y'all over there when i was in, out of town i have y'all some of y'all ministers went to go pray some of y'all young ladies went to go pray. When she was in the hospital, some people went. When she went to the hospital, people went. You know, so, so that's what ministry is about. We're supposed to do that. Yeah. When people are ill and sick, you know, of course, the pastors to go pray for them, but there should be people in the church that go out and visit. Y'all ain't saying that? Yeah. Now, that's what they used to do back in the day. They used to go house to house and help and visit people, visit the saints, make sure everything was going on, make sure everything was going good with them. All right, 127 James, read, huh? Pure religion... And undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Visit and the fatherless and the widows. To visit. Visit. Y'all see that? To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. Uh-huh. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. All right. So we, we have a responsibility to make sure that we're visiting people. Because if this, this is a part of ministry, we want to make sure that if there's issue going on, with issues going on with certain people in the church or anything like that, people that need different things, we make sure we're visiting them. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Uh, read, huh? 
All right, uh, go to Matthew chapter 25. All right. All right, Matthew 25 and 33. Now, this is a list of things, all right, that... Let me get Josh up here this time. I think Josh got a little bit more, some good hand handwriting. His handwriting might be a little better than yours. <laughs> All right. These are some of the things that the church, the ministry of the church uh, member is responsible for. All right. Number one thing is uh, uh, feeding the hungry. All right. All right, the next one is uh, giving drink to the thirsty. All right, the next one is to provide temporary housing. And so you know how sometimes some of y'all, you know, when people, you know, are transitioning and stuff like that and you allow people to stay at your house, that's ministry. You're supposed to do that. Oh, Lord, you got real quiet. Now, they ain't supposed to just live there for, for the rest of their life and all that stuff like that. But, you know, it, 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 temporary housing is something that is that the church should be able to provide. Oh, Lord, it got quiet. Are y'all all right? This, it, this is ministry. You're supposed to have the ability one of the brothers, you know, just something happened or whatever. They need to crash at one of the other brothers' house for a month or two or whatever like that and get, get on their feet. That's good. Help them out. That's, that's what ministry is for. Y'all, one of y'all young ladies in Long Shore Place or whatever like that, and you got to stay with a sister or something like that. That's, that's ministry. We're supposed to do that for each other. All right, read, huh? Oh, uh, next one, provide clothing. All right. Visit when sick and visit when in prison. Y'all all right? They used to visit Paul while he was in jail. <laughs> folks, you know, everybody don't go to jail for doing the wrong thing. Sometimes they be setting people up. All type of stuff happen to folks who go to jail. Amen. Y'all all right? People, saints go to jail. Sometimes the saints, they don't, you don't know your license suspended, be in jail for <laughs> suspended license, all type of stuff. Some stuff happened, and it's our job <laughs> as a church to go fit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> they say all oh, the people, the <laughs> saints go to jail. Yeah, they go to jail. Paul went to jail. <laughs> Amen. John went to jail. Peter went to jail. A lot of the apostles went to jail for preaching the gospel. Matter of fact, one of our pastors went to jail for preaching in the streets. All right? Oh, that's, that's going to be the sixth one. All right? So those are the six things that every true Christian should be doing. This is a part of the ministry of the body of Christ. Now, go to Matthew 25 and 33. Huh? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Uh -huh. Then shall the king say unto, say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Uh -huh. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. All right, I was hungry, and you gave me meat. That means that you fed the hungry. Uh huh. I was thirsty, and ye have you gave me drink. Giving drink to the thirsty. Uh huh. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. I was a stranger, meaning that I provide housing. Uh huh. Naked and ye clothed me. I provide clothing. Uh huh. I was sick and ye visited me. You came to see me when I was sick. Uh huh. I was in prison and ye came unto me. I was in prison. Now this is the scripture now, so don't be looking funny. When somebody, <laughs> Amen. So when I was in prison, ye came unto me. To be honest, Jesus went to jail too. Oh, y'all don't read your Bible. Lord, have mercy. It got real quiet. Jesus went to jail. He sure did. Remember they exchanged him. They said they wanted uh, Barabbas instead of him. He said, yeah, let him go and take him on in there so he can be crucified. Amen. All right. So these are the things that, you know, uh, uh, lines up under visitation. These are the things as true Christians that we should be doing when we see this going on in the house of the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
All right, now uh, I'll go over the, the other things. Uh, got a few more things to go over, but I'll finish this up. Uh, go to First John chapter 3. Then I'll be closing. And we're going to have, I want all the brothers. This ain't all the brothers, is it? Where are all the brothers at? Brothers. Who do I talk to? We'll get everybody together. All right. All right, First John chapter 3. And 16, huh? Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. For whoso hath his, this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So now, if you see somebody in need, and you don't have compassion, how in the world you got the love of God in you? Do you have the love of God in you? If, if you, you mean to tell me that you'll see somebody struggling, and you can help them. You can help them right where they're at, and you won't do it. They had a saying, they say, every dog have his day. Anybody know what that means? Let me tell you what it means. It means that you got to be very careful how you treat certain people that's going through because you can be the next person going through it. Every, everybody, listen, you can, have, you, can have, you can have the most money in the world. That, that bank account can go to zero overnight. That thing had your heart trouble. I, I remember I had, I, I had my, uh, I had quite a few thousand dollars in the account, and I was uh went to go. I think I went to go purchase gas, and then had that Declan. Then Declan jumped on me. I said, "Man, what's going on with the car?" I started panicking, man, and uh, I was supposed to pay for something, and I forgot. I, I forgot. I, you know, when we first start a business, you gotta make sure you get all your, you know, ducks in the row. And I was supposed to be paying paying for a, a, a specific thing. I didn't know they could just come and just take. Man, they wiped my whole account out. I'm talking about wipe, over sixty thousand dollars just wiped out. I started sweating and panicking. I, I called I called the pops. I said, "Pops, I don't know what's going on, man. Somebody stole my money out of my account. I don't know what's going on." That thing, it, 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 you could be. I'm telling you something. You could be all the way up here, and then overnight, it, 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 it'll flop. You ever see somebody do a belly flop in the pool? It'll be just like that. So when you see somebody that needs something and you can help them, it's your responsibility. Now, and I'm not saying, because you got some people that abuse you. I'm not talking about abusive people. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. some people can be a little abusive. And you don't want to, I'm not saying you help people out every, every week. They need your help and need you to do something for them. They do this and do that. Do that tomorrow or something else. Hey, I just need, uh, can I get $5 of gas today? I'm trying to, I got to go to work. Then the next day, uh, you think I get $10 more dollars for gas because yesterday it went kind of fast. But where are you working at? You ain't getting no money to get, get your own gas money. Hey, no, no, you, you, you help out a few times and then you, keep, you still calling me talking about gas money. You got a job? Hold on, we got a problem. Because if I got a job and you got a job and I got gas money and you don't, somebody, something may happen, something ain't right. <laughs> some, somebody telling the story. You spent that $5 on something else. I mean, gas going up. Gas going up. Hey, man, that's a spirit. Yeah. That thing high and lifted up. <laughs> I think the gas prices done, gas prices done went in the spirit. They done went to the book of Revelation. They done come up hither. The gas prices <laughs> the spirit of the Lord was upon the gas prices and it took it up. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Amen. But but you, you want to help people, and when you help them, you help them that you can help. And let me tell y'all something. Don't get mad at people that can't help you. Now, let me tell you something. Just because I can, if I was helping you for six months straight, maybe you took all my money and I can't help you the next day. 
I ain't got no more help. And you say, hey, can I, I just need, if you think it's possible, I need a little bit more gas. Just need this one last time. I say, oh, hold on, I, not, this time I don't have it. You can't get mad at me. I done helped you for six months, and you going to look at me funny and don't want to speak to me in church because I ain't helped you this last time. People do stuff like that now. Looking sour at you because you ain't helping one time. You done helped them 300 times, and you got just that one time you can't help. They get upset and get mad at you. Amen. All right, now, so the Bible talks about having that compassion. So if you see somebody in need and you don't have compassion, then your love for God is questioned. Your position as a Christian is questioned. Your position as a, twel- a child of God is questioned. Because I see my brother in need and I don't do anything for him when I can. I see that the, you know, he ain't got no shoes and I got my closet full of shoes and I can't give it up. So then if I can do that and I don't, then my Christianity or me calling myself a Christian is in question. Me calling myself a believer, me calling myself a son of God or a child of God is in question. Amen. All right, any questions tonight about stewardship? We done went over church care, member care, visitation. Amen. Any, 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 anybody got any questions? Any questions? All right. Amen. All right, stand up and give the Lord a hand. Praise tonight. I hope you learned something tonight. Amen. Uh, the Lord has been blessing us. Amen. We... Make sure, invite somebody out to service. We had a good time this past Sunday. Amen. The church full. Thank God for God just sending random people coming into church. God is sending, God is just, it's just God, when God do things, you know that it's him. Y'all make sure y'all, everybody invite one person out tomorrow. Amen. So good to see.